So I did something I probably shouldn't have done today. Research. No. No. What did you do today? Uh, I did research. Okay. <laughs> I downloaded uh -oh. whatever that app is. Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I downloaded Clubhouse today. The exclusive app, because if there was anything we learned in 2020 and going into 2021 is that we need more exclusivity in our lives. More closed networks. More closed, exclusive, keep people out. <laughs> yep. 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 I, uh, I did it while I was waiting for my computer to reboot because I didn't know if I'd be able to make it on time. And oh, okay. uh, and uh, I got an invite from our friend, Mr. Jenkins. And then I got an invite from our friend, Ms. Taggio. And I said to Ms. Taggio, I don't even know my login password for Apple. So, mm. yeah. And she's like, she goes, it's older people talking about business. I'm like, what the fuck you call me older? Clubhouse is older people talking about business. She says older people talking about business. Probably did it somehow that was a, That's a some sort feature. of an attempt to make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, so I just, I downloaded it while I was waiting for my, my computer to boot before we jumped on here. Yeah. And I went through all, you know, what are your interests and blah, blah, blah. And then it just gave me what, one of the first ones was um, uh, the power of God. I'm like, hmm, pretty off, as, pretty in, off as an interest. No, as like my one of my first rooms to enter. Oh, and I'm like you pretty, you pretty, you pretty off on that one. So far, so far, your algorithm's not really uh, <laughs> serving up uh, appropriate content for Greg. Uh, and then I jumped into one room just because you say you're an influencer. Are you an influencer? And I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know how it works because I'm like I'm sitting there in this room with like 700 other people. Uh -huh. uh, everybody's on mute. I don't know if I'm on mute. I I, I hope I'm on mute. Is somebody speaking? Uh, somebody speaking. And so I don't know how you collaborate inside these these rooms with 700 people. I think you could start your own room as well. You can. You can totally and invite invite people there. Totally. Totally. You know. Um, but yeah, that was, um, that was, uh... let's, let's speak quickly then about social networks that are no more. One that I see every once in a while in my, my Facebook, uh, memories, particularly yeah. around this time, but between the time that I was at fresh books before joining flight center yeah. was blip FM. I loved blip FM. What was that? That Blip FM is still around. I haven't logged in. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it was basically they they pivoted after. Um, this is around two thousand and nine, and it was a it was a service that basically you went in and DJed. So you played song, you shared songs, and it was using like ripped MP3s. So okay. I don't know where like it was off my like it was a peer to peer almost to start, and then they got probably sued their asses off like a lime wire kind of thing but it was more it was more a dj collaborative you know i followed you you followed me yeah but i thought it was really cool and then they pivoted to embedding youtubes youtube videos um, but then my guess is people were sharing youtube videos that weren't approved by the publisher uh fair enough company. yeah and thus then that got shut down too so i don't know i went i went to it the other day because i saw something that I blipped. And you uh, blipped. <laughs> you blipped. No. Didn't Apple That's... try to do something? I don't know. I don't know. I thought maybe they tried to do something. I don't know. It's interesting. Anyways, that's the uh, that's the pre-show, or is it? Listen, by the time this... Or is it? When this episode comes out, Greg, it will be... What day will it be? Hold on. Let's quickly go. It Monday, will, February the, the 15th. 15th. 
which is a, a, a holiday here in Ontario. But the following day, it will be the birthday of the weekend. Oh, yeah. I did not know Feb- that. February 16th. So a, a happy early birthday. Yep. And uh, congratulations. To, to Scarborough's The Weekend. Um, yeah, he... Now, I don't know whether we want to talk about... He spent a lot of money on this. He spent like $7 million of his own money. I quickly read somewhere that he's not getting paid for the Super Bowl show. Um, I haven't looked into it. But I, I think we should talk about the show itself. Yeah, I mean, to to that, I, 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 uh, I'm I pretty sure if it costs $7 million of the weekend's money, he's he's probably not hurting from that, so... No, yeah. And 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 what it drove. Maybe we'll talk about this. What it drove. In terms of like the number of people that saw him, people that might not have known of him before. Yeah. You know, Kel Kel brought that up while we were watching it. In terms of like this, you know, there's a big audience, big football, you know, redneck audience that watched that performance. Uh I thought I thought he did a great job. And I, I thought the the whole, you know, once they went down onto the, the floor. Yeah. Or onto the field. Yeah. Um, you know, the whole, like everybody was essentially six feet apart except for him who was dancing around. But you know what I mean? Like I thought, I thought there were a lot of really good messages in it. It was, it was interesting. Um, I didn't see that message, okay. but. Well, that's you, because you, I'm you obviously more sensitive knew. to that than you. You're very sensitive, sensitive men. That's good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it balances out your old curmudgeon get off my lawn persona totally. <laughs> that you uh, uh, that you uh, personify on Twitter. Totally. But um, it because you knew this. You knew that you couldn't necessarily compare it to any other show because there wasn't going to be like an audience in the pit, right? It, it wasn't yeah. going to be one of those. Um, I was really curious if it was going to be a, a live show or a pre-recorded show because, you know, you're playing to a stadium that could fit, I don't know, 70 plus thousand people, but there was only 25, apparently only 25,000 people in attendance yep. because they said social distance, but uh, I don't know. Those people look kind of close, but regardless Not of that, social distance happening, but yeah, um, I didn't know what to expect. Right. Cause on the, on the, um, I don't know if you are a if you watch any of the late shows, but um, you know shows like uh, Jimmy Fallon or uh, a late show with Stephen Colbert. When they have musical guests, it's it's almost always pre taped. It's a pre taped show um, that these people are performing in wherever it is that that band happens yep. uh, to be. So. It was great that it was live. I knew there wasn't going to be a pit of people, you know, mosh pit or, you know, crowds of people together. Um, And so I didn't know what to expect uh, at all. Uh, I'm not a fan of these sort of lip syncing performances. You know, the the music was obviously recorded. The... He had a live mic, but if he didn't yeah. bother singing, the, the vocals were still there, right? I'm not a huge fan of that. I guess I understand it, but um, yeah, I was trying to catch that, particularly when it was in that gold room, right at the beginning. Right at the beginning, you could. Uh, like, I missed catch that it. then. Yeah, okay. I missed that. It was like always oh, lip syncing, right? But you knew, like the way these are played, it's like yeah. pre-recorded, just in case something happens. Yeah. Uh, but you give him a live mic anyway, so he could, you know, whatever he wants to say, if he wants to go as with you or uh, Tampa Bay or whatever, right? So, uh, yeah, but he was doing more than that. He was singing over top. Like, he was singing. Yes, he was. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But there was parts where you sort of, you caught yeah, I'm him. I'm not sure that wasn't just the background vocals. Anyway, I have to go back and watch it again. Yeah, I don't know. You, 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 at the beginning, I sort of, ah, uh, he's not. He's singing, but it's, you know, it's not what we're hearing is, is both him singing and yeah. his recorded yeah. singing. Yeah. But in terms of 
the actual performance. I don't know how you can, I don't know how someone can be negative on it because you're not, you're playing to really the television camera. Yeah. Right. So that song where he went into, I think it was, I don't know what song it was, but he went into sort of the tunnel with all of the lights uh, where most of the memes are from uh, when yeah. he went in there. Um, that was, I can't feel my face when I'm with you. Yeah. Which yeah. apparently is about cocaine, Greg. I don't know if uh, if you knew that. Yeah, it's yes. not about, it's not about yes. living in Scarborough in the wintertime. And that's the pre-show. And that's the pre-show. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Hi, the following podcast is brought to you by Radical Road Brewery, the best craft beer in the heart of Leslieville. Find them at 1177 Queen Street East. That's Radical Road Brewery. The Hotel Isabella. The Skizzy Izzy. Built in 1890 at the uh, corner of Isabella and where in Sherburn. Toronto? Do you remember? Sherburne. Sherburne in Toronto. Yeah. Not so far from uh, where I th- this podcast was birthed or the pre-birth and where it was uh, uh, conceived at uh, Sherburne and uh, King. At the That's old... True. Yeah. That's true. The old Pacific Junction. Yeah. Which may or may not be part of this... Uh, lost venues uh, yeah hotel isabella um there's not a lot that is easily accessible in terms of information on the hotel in its, you know, in its heyday, or as a concert venue, you really have to dig and search, and you know, know the different places to go to. Um, but you played there as a young man. I played there a few times. I played which, there a few times. Which which band or bands did you play there with? Um. That would be International Boundaries. International Boundaries. Yeah. All right. Yeah, played there a few times. It was, uh, again, it's one of these, it's interesting because around that time it was one of these venues that's part of sort of this East End, not, well, not East End, but East of Young, Young East. Yeah. Yeah. Um, group of music venues that were around at the time. There was like the diamond that's now the Phoenix. Uh, there was the gas works, right? That was, uh, that had the tunnel that went underground from the gas works out to Scarborough. So all you Scarborians could jump in the tunnel and it was your quick way up into the gas works. Um, that's way East. I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm saying it in terms of the audience that would show up at the gas works. Um, there was <laughs> the weekend was there. What do you, what do you mean? The, the type of people that came to the gas works were from Scarborough. Please think about Wayne's world. Also. Think about Wayne's world. And what was the name of the club? What was the name of the club? And it was, it was, they would go to that club. And the joke was that it was like the club that they all came from their, suburban because i think they had to set wayne's world somewhere in like chicago or something but we all know it was based on toronto yeah. and it's like it's like i don't think they called it the gas works in the movie but it was i don't remember I mean, yeah mike myers was absolutely paying homage to the gas works and the fact that it was all the scarborough kids that would end up at the gas works but anyway all right that's not what we're here to talk about no hotel isabella now yeah. it was it was a hotel yeah, it was and a nice, it, I mean, well, not, not during the time when I played there, it was not a nice hotel. No. It, it was, was uh, originally probably in whenever it was built, a nice hotel. I think soon um, after, like the 30s, 40s, from what I read, some of the yeah. research I did, it was a pretty fancy hotel. People went there 
um, to celebrate wedding anniversaries, right? So, you know, it wasn't a dive. Um, but so did, so there was two places from what I read that you could have played it. There was the basement bar under the Izzy. Yep. And there was the main floor, the cameo lounge. Yep. Yep. Did you have a chance to play them both? Did not, did not. Um, it's interesting you say that because that's, that was very much, you know, a time before we get there. If you think about from a historical perspective, yeah, you know, not going back to the early 1900s, but um, if you think about our friend Dave McPherson and his book about the horseshoe, yeah, he references Kenny Sprackman, who eventually went on to become uh, the booker with with Star for the horseshoe. I think in 85 ish, and then ended up buying it with X Ray and. Dan Aykroyd and that whole team. So back sort of early 80s, Kenny um, started booking the Isabella and he turned it into what I became where I played. I think he was like, I think he was early 80s, like 82, maybe something like that. Um, and it became the new wave slash music place. Really? That Yeah, yeah, uh, with live music. Um, and then, yeah, by the time I played, which would have been sort of the 85-ish, uh, I was talking to Kelly on our walk today about this, trying to figure out if, if I would have ever crossed over from when we played there versus when Kenny was booking. But I think Kenny would have been at the horseshoe. And on the horseshoe, we had the discussion about Kenny and X-Ray and, and Jeff, the singer for International Boundaries and Moxie and the guys wasted on the front lawn in the schwa. Anyway, that's a whole other story. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was it was um, it was a really interesting venue because there was upstairs, there was downstairs, and downstairs were the new bands, and upstairs were, you know, the the regulars like Jack DeKaiser had a weekly gig there, and I remember playing a number of times in the basement while Jack was playing upstairs. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was it was a it was a neat bar. It was like when I think about all the bars I played over the years, it's like it was a it was a neat place. It had a vibe that was just cool. Dirty you paint, down, can, you know. Yeah, sorry. so I was wondering, can you can you describe, you know, what what under the Izzy? Like what so as, as you enter the as you enter Hotel Isabella, you okay. know, do you go around the side and go take the stairs down? Like the no, I don't think sort of I don't think that side I think you went through the main doors on the side, if I remember correctly, and then went downstairs and then sort of left into the Izzy. Um, that that door that's sort of uh, facing Isabella, not on Sherburne. Um, I don't remember that. I, I remember that, and I could be wrong, but I remember that being just where we loaded in our gear because the stage was just to the right there as soon as you walked in. Um, yeah. I know on our on our last episode you talked about the green room being someone's living room. Was there was, was no there, room there was there any any uh, weird rooms or corners? Uh, no, nah, it just had easy. character. No, it just had character. There's no green room. The green room would have been. I, I had a van called what we called the Rambo van. It was my my uncle Brian who did. Uh, he did. He's done many things. Did construction for a while, like renovations. And he bought an old army van. And then when he was done with it, he gave me it. So we, that's what we used to drive around the band in and all our gear. And uh, we, I would park, I would park the Rambo van on the corner on the boulevard at Isabel and Sherburne. I don't know how we never got tickets. I think I've always put like a, like on delivery sign in the front window. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That was our change room. Um, no, I mean, the, the Isabella, the, I think the thing about downstairs that I always thought was, that stuck with me is the downstairs stage had like this, like a plumbing pipe that went right across the front of it. And, you know, for somebody like me, you know, five, nine, not a big deal for somebody like Jeff, six, four. So it was like above the would, stage, right on. Yeah. The it was like really like right above where, and Jeff would be singing and like banging his head off the, the pipe, if I remember correctly. And yeah, no, it was uh it was a weird setup, but it was neat. It was it was just a cool vibe. How many people could fit in there? I don't know. 
maybe. Was it a big room, small like room? Like 60? No, no, no okay. it was tiny. Downstairs was tiny. Upstairs was bigger. Yeah. Downstairs was probably 60. It was one of those things where you, you know, you, you got the door. You know, you didn't make anything more than the door. So yeah. you gave away your free tickets. You didn't make that. You, you know, got people down that would pay three bucks to get in. You get, you know, 20 people to pay. <laughs> There's 60 bucks for the night. Jeez. Wow. How do you make a living off of that? There were a lot, a lot of people played in that room. And by people, I, you know, yes, the numbers of people, but a lot of people that I think our listeners would be very uh, familiar with. You talked about Dan Aykroyd. He was a, a one-time owner of the venue. Is that correct? No, 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 no. The horseshoe. I'm talking about when, when, when Kenny, when Kenny and X-Ray, oh, okay, when Kenny, okay. who formerly booked the Isabella, went over to the horseshoe and then oh, okay. was booking that and then ended up eventually buying it. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I know Dan Aykroyd, he hung, I don't know if he played there or he hung out there as a fan of sort of the blues. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I think sort of him, him and Belushi, uh, I don't know if Belushi ever came over, but Dan mm-hmm. Aykroyd, similar to you talking about Mike Myers and, you know, what uh, um, the gas works. Uh, I think Dan Aykroyd, in terms of his Blues Brothers persona, uh, took a lot of of what he saw at uh, at the Isabella uh, yeah. uh, for that, but uh, a band that you're a huge fan of, Big Sugar, played there. Yep. Uh, Burton Cummings could be found uh, tickling the uh, the pianos. Uh, Molly Johnson mm-hmm. played there. Jeff Healy. Uh, played played there as well. Yeah, it was it was like again, it wasn't you know up downstairs was smaller, upstairs was bigger. Um, it was the the marquee place, marquee place. Um, no, a lot of people went through there. I, I remember, and and I, I I was trying to remember before we hopped on this call if he played or not. But I re, I'm, I'm I'd have to confirm with Jeff. But I remember meeting Long John Baldry there. I think he was playing one night upstairs while we were playing downstairs. So yeah, no, a lot of, a lot of big names went through that, that place. Um, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people came to see like different bands as well. I mean, you know, at our shows, there was, I remember Mark Steffler from Platinum Blonde. Oh yeah. Came down. Now I, th- if, I think a friend of ours dragged them along. I don't know if they're, I can't remember <laughs> dating or get crushed or if it was I, don't know, I can't remember what it was but anyway um joe visbury from images in vogue who lived just down the street he uh he came a few times to see us play there um we just became buds with them over the years and and uh little hang out it's funny because actually joe lived just down the street on um carlton i think and I remember Jeff and I, I think, I think it was before one of the shows at the Isabella. And we went to Joe's place and it was like this small apartment on Carlton and it was hot and sweaty and the window was open and he had the fan in the thing. And, and we were just sitting there and like somebody's outside doing the whole uh, uh, Rocky Balboa, not Adrian, but Stella. No, that's not Rocky Balboa. Anyway, whatever, whatever. I, I mixed up my, my references so, there, but anyway, named desire. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Maybe anyway, I screwed that one up. But anyway, I remember Jeff and I sitting there going, is this rock stardom? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did, again, the guys did well and I'm not trying to diminish their, their success and everything else. And I mean, he had an apartment down on Carlton and we were kids living in Whitby in our basement, our parents' basement. So who am I yeah. to complain, but uh, who, who am I to compare? But yeah, no, it was, um, yeah. Again, it was just, you know, a lot of memories around that place for sure. So international oh. boundaries. Yeah. Is, uh, cause plastic dolls was the first iteration. Yeah. International boundaries is the third iteration of basically the same lineup, right? No, it's, um, similar people from, from plastic dolls, like Sean, Mike, me, and drummer would have drummers changed around. Sometimes it was Jamie. 
who was in Plastic Dolls at the end. Uh, and then the addition of Jeff. Jeff was Jeff. the lead singer. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff was the lead singer. So um, did the music change as well as the names? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, Plastic Dolls was very dancey, princey kind of thing. Um, International Boundaries was um, more, more, well, I'll say new wave for lack of a better word, more, you know, uh, some some darker and not darker influences and not darker was the right word but like sort of the well actually it's funny because one of my favorite memories from the isabella it's not even just the isabella one of my favorite memories playing live is playing killing jokes love like blood in that basement live and that's just like yeah i just get goosebumps when i think about that one i don't know why i don't know why but i just love that memory um yeah, so it was. It was more. It was more like uh, it was more new wave, I guess, than than sort of dancey, princey kind of thing. More Duran Duran, Depeche Mode, yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of, but All a right. mix like like a Susie and the Banshees. Speaking of the Super Bowl, as we talked about in the pre-show, I don't know if you caught that. You probably wouldn't because a you don't know the weekend's music well, and b you don't know Susie and the Banshees. So you know, I get it. That's fine. Carrying on. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it was it was a good time. It was a good time. But sadly, much like many venues, you know, now, now it's well, it's interesting because I've gone to a few shows at the Phoenix, and it's now a boutique hotel and a Gabby's in the boutique, basement. Boutique, boutique in in air quotes. Yeah, boutique and air quotes. It's still yeah. a it's still a dump. Well, not know. a dump. It's it's a it's a sanitized dump. Let's say, you know, yeah. it's, it's not going to be very expensive if you want to be in the city or you come from somewhere else. From what I've been told, it's an affordable place to lay your head, but do not expect room service. Oh, I don't know. Sort of I thing. Yeah. Right. But yeah, there's yeah. no more. There's no more bands. Oh, no. sorry. There's no more live music. No, and uh, it's really it's really weird because it's like you know I've gone to a few shows at the Phoenix where I've gone to the Gabby's for for dinner or drinks or whatever before we go to the show. Did we go there one time? Maybe not. Anyway, I don't recall. I don't recall. I, I was thinking with Warren, but maybe not because I remember going there with Warren. I was thinking if you were at that show or not. But anyway. Um, and it's really weird to be sitting there and looking into the corner that had so many memories for me. Yeah. Thinking I'm sitting in a Gabby's. Nothing against Gabby's. I enjoy having some <laughs> wings and a couple of pints at a Gabby's, but it's just weird. It's like, and that's where, when you talked about that side door entrance. Yeah. I mean, that's now the entrance to Gabby's. And it was like, just, it's weird walking down those stairs thinking I used to, you know, in my late teens, well, late teens. Yeah. Mid to late teens haul gear down that those stairs and now i'm walking into a into a gabby's a franchise <laughs> listen I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you for another uh memory or a feeling about uh playing uh with international boundaries at, at the isabella but before i go there you sort of um you you talk about you know sitting in a gabby's and looking in a corner and that's where you used to play um Manaz and I got married. This is has nothing to do with music. In the basement I, of the Isabella? Oh, close. <laughs> yeah. Manaz and I got married <laughs> on the Danforth. Yep. Uh, at a former um at a former independent movie theater that is currently a Tim Hortons. Uh you probably it's near it's near Pape. Uh, Dad Forrest near Pape, I think it is. Greenwood? Is it Greenwood? Where you that, got married it, in the old Roxy? Yeah. That's where we got married. Really? Yeah. I, we thought it was a cool place. It was like an old theater. And it was, at the time, there was a, an Indian guy that owned the place and was 
uh, you know, doing events there and stuff. And I said, awesome. Like, let's, this is a different place. Uh, it's not a banquet hall per se. Yeah. It's not sterile like that. This is, this is interesting. It's got some character. Yeah. Uh, and then one day I'm walking by and I go, what the heck? Why is there a Tim Hortons? <laughs> That's like Tim Hortons, SO. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, that place. <laughs> and like a, like a SO to go convenience store. Yeah. Yeah. So when I go there to get uh, my hot chocolate and chocolate donut, I look in the corner and I go, oh, that's where we got married. <laughs> that place was famous for showing the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I think it was also a strip club at one point in time. But um, I, don't yeah, so. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Unless you went there a different time than I did. I think, yeah. I think the hours, depending on what hour you went. But... Um, <laughs> I'm not speaking from personal experience. Okay, so let's wrap it up, Greg, with a, uh, you know, you talked about playing a song there. One of your favorite memories gives you goosebumps. Um, what else What else can you tell us about uh, playing at the Isabella? What sort of, whether it's a favorite memory or a memory of something that just went terribly wrong? Uh, other than Jeff banging his head off of the, that pipe, the sewage pipe. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I would say that like, it was a, it was a really interesting room from the perspective. It was very narrow as okay. I remember. Um, and sort of went to the right, like the, the, the room size, um, yeah, I, 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 there's, there's, aside, you know, again, we're talking about um, playing Killing Joke. Um, it was just to me, it was a really good time in the international boundaries timeline. You know, what I mean, like, like there was times, you know, after Mike had left the band, but this was a time when Mike was in the band and Sean and Jeff and you know, whether it was Jamie or Scott or whoever was on drums. And uh, we were just like, it was a, to me, it's a time in that band's lineage, if you will. Um, that was just fun and good. And maybe that's why I have such good memories of the Isabella. Like there were other times when it was work or tough or, you know, people weren't getting along, but I just remember that being a time in our band's timeline that, that it was just like a, it was a really fun time. What was the, what was the the draw for you guys as a band to play there? Was it was it just easy to to book the place and make the deal with the booker to, to get the door? No, you just wanted to play all over the place. So okay, like we would be playing there, and we were playing the Cabana Room. We'd be playing you know um, El Macombo, and we'd be playing you know what I mean. It was like in Lee's Palace, and no, it was just like. You just wanted to play as much as you could. So wherever you could get booked into. Nice. Yeah. That's the Hotel Isabella with Greg and International Boundaries. <laughs>